What is up guys and welcome to another episode of Crushing Small Stakes PLO. We are playing 50 cent $1 today on Ignition. And we have a good mix of uh, regs and recreationals at the tables, so we should have some interesting dynamics. And make sure you subscribe, we're going to have a lot of uh, content coming out this week. So stay up to date with that. And also, make sure you check out PLOPokerCoaching.com where we have a lot of free resources there to improve your game and also offer a 30 minute free coaching session. Um, cold calling here just against this uh, very wide recreational pair. Uh, we flop two pair. And on the top right, um, all the draws do miss. I mean, we do block diamonds. We block 9 10. Expect to run into a 7 here. A decent frequency. And. do get the lead out here. Uh, I'm actually going to stab at this uh, pot. It's very hard for a lot of ranges to hit here and obviously this guy doesn't just have overpass and we do get the raise with top two in a three-way pot. Um, I am actually just going to fold now even though we do pick up some equity. A call here and ISO with the Queens and we turn the open ender but are likely uh, given all card removal effects um, going to run into some sort of straight here and this guy I think is probably gonna jam a decent portion of his range Obviously caps himself hard on the turn. He shouldn't have any sets. He shouldn't really have any straights at this point. This guy um, This is the guy that I am worried about in terms of his range and what it looks like. Um, he is gonna be able to bet some sets now value some lower strats um, given the cap ranges I just don't see too many people bluffing here into two people even though we do block the straight and unblock hearts um, but I just unfortunately don't think that we have call here and Top right, a very dynamic board. We have some decent blockers, but we're just gonna see too many calls here. This guy checks, we can definitely bet. This turn card is a card that I would bet with um, my overpower heavy range, but when he leads into two people, we can just let it go. And we flop the small flush here. And face a pot sized dunk. Basically. Basically saying he has the nuts or the nut blocker already at this stage in the hand. Don't love the bet. Uh, we're obviously not folding a flush. Um, but we do have a pair blocker. And then he sizes down on the turn. We'll see if he triples off on the river.
and he gives up. I don't think there's any, any need to turn our hand into a bluff. Pretty bad turn card. Doesn't get better. And yeah, we'll check here. Um, yeah, just going to fold here. There's just too much that he can bet the value once the ranges are that capped. And I don't block much of it. Uh, I mean, you shouldn't really be um, overcalling some of these type of hands that are kind of middling that are going to be dominated in multi-way parts, but against these two players, I am going to complete two of the weaker players at the table. But, unfortunately, do not connect. I'm very tempted against this half pot size bet, to be honest, into three people. It's usually pretty weak on the flop from recreational players, but just not quite enough. Is calling here. Not a bad flop, but still pretty marginal. No real reason to bet into four people. I think we can actually stab this turn. It leaves us open for some more bluffing opportunities on blanks. Probably should go for a smaller sizing to be honest, but given the dynamic nature of the board, I would probably size up here with my actual mad hands. And getting called in few spots is not great, and then that river is not ideal either. Uh, blocking the hearts, blocking the pairs on the board with no diamond. I expect someone to show up with a flush here pretty frequently, but apparently not. Still don't think that I'm ever bluffing into three people there without a diamond. We did just put out a video on HUDs in, HUDs in general and how you can use them to exploit and beat your opponents. And I do specifically talk about my HUD setup and what stats that I usually look for. Um, so if you are interested, go take a look at that video that we just posted and it will give you some more detail behind these numbers and how I use them. Heads up, I would be calling this to float uh, with some good blocking potential, obviously night outs. Um, that's a pretty good turn. I know diamonds I am not going to lead. I 
the attention of chat calling and then bluffing pretty much uh, a lot of non-diamond runouts. We get three bet here. This is a very standard fold. Pocket pair, not double suited, not even suited to the ace. And we do river the nuts. Um, so... The question is, do we want to lead, or do we want to check and induce? Um... Blocking all the diamonds, but we do unblock all of the mid hands prior to the river. That would look to bet the turn in terms of sets and two pairs. I think I am just gonna pot it. And hopefully, get looked up by like King Nine Ten, King, king Seven Ten, something like that. Uh, without diamonds. Given that he tanked, I think that probably was the the better option to bet. Maybe maybe we could have gone smaller and maybe would have got a call. But he didn't snap fold, so I don't think he was betting draws on the turn. Um, just going to fold this here. Very tight player, ice wing. And this hand is not going to play well in a three uh, way situation. be defending against the small blind here. This table's starting to look a little bit better and hopefully somewhat more profitable. Although we are doing okay in the session when adjusted for EV. did lose a fun pot uh, in the beginning before the recording where we had the nut flush on the turn got it in against top set and uh, he unfortunately connected with quads on the river <laughs> for, uh, for a $300 pot um on this turn, I am going to check back here. There's just not too much that's worse that's probably calling at this point. You don't need too many, um, too much protection on board pairs, given that we have the six. And he's still going to check back or check some king queen high flushes here on the pad board, so. Don't want to value cut myself too much. And we will value bet the river. And we will be calling these kings given the two players that are involved in the pot. We'll 
obviously good stacking off against this player. Unfortunately, it is the deeper player in position that goes for the bet. Uh, the question is, do we want to raise? And I think the answer is no. I think he's going to have a lot of no flushes in his ranch. It's a pretty good river card for us. Um, you know, likely any flush type hands or two pair type hands. He's going to continue barreling on this turn. So I think that we can go for a block bet sizing here and potentially get called by a 10, maybe, that also had a flush draw that led. He will have some missed draws, but we do block hands like 5-6 uh, for the combo side. And if he had a hand like, oh, okay, well, that's what happens when you are too busy listening to the sound of your own voice. So we probably missed out on some value there. I'm just folding the rainbow ace king. And here against the minres, depending on what this guy does, I will probably overcall this guy is um, three betting uh six percent so i don't expect to get raised over the top too much and we have a hand that can flop uh some pretty nutted draws and hands and against a large band of four don't think that we're going to fold here against this player but if there's a couple of calls then we may have to We just don't really have many clean outs, apart from the offsuit jack. Even a queen, a king, we're likely still struggling, so I am just going to let this one go. And ace 10 10 on the button, crazy daisy. And we get dunked into here with the backdoor flush draw and potential strap blocker. I am going to call in position, although this is pretty marginal already, and that is not a great turn given that we block pairs and draws. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm kind of tempted to just like stab at this. I, I don't think he's gonna fold us straight at this point anyway. We will check some flushes. I mean, we're pretty much giving up if we check back. And on this river, <clears throat> I could see him going ahead and pawing or betting large. And yeah, we just, we have to fold. You will do this with, you know, ace king, ace queen with diamonds. Um, any pair blocker or diamond can block, can bluff, uh, can bet here. And we do not have a diamond. So unfortunately we are out. And we will be opening the 
double suited low connected aces. The run down here might be a little low, um, but sounds like these are good to build into your fallback range as well. As you know, you quite heavily block aces, and you also have pretty solid equity if you do end up getting it in against aces. I was hovering over here just because I was pretty card dead and was tempted to open that under the gun, but that is a quite trashy double suit ace. enough to open though with the nut suit. These hands, I mean, are some of the ones that you can kind of potentially start dropping. This one's a little too connected, but start dropping out of your range once you have these high B-pit players behind. Um, because the, the EV of your hand that's associated with bold equity and just taking down the blinds is almost non-existent in, in these environments. So then you have to think about how much equity you're actually pushing with your hand in a multi-wear uh, pot. And it is not going to be much. Um, here... I'm actually just going to lead small. Just try and fold out... Um, some kind of gut shots, maybe low flush draws, and then start polarizing on the turn. We obviously get res, which is not ideal. Um, three bet top right and get what looks like three callers. And rainbow board SPR like 2.5 into four people. I think we block enough of the board with a 10 that I kind of just want to go ahead and pot. And we're obviously calling here with top two. That's a pretty good turn um, on the board pairing card after the raise on the flop. Um, we won't have any leads on this turn. Given that our opponent holds the entire equity, uh, the, the polarity advantage, um, given that he raised and we just flat, we eliminate obviously top set from our range. So he is all of the nut boats. Now the question is it is very likely that he missed all of his draws. And the question is is he going to bluff? or not. And I don't think he is going to. Maybe if we take a small stab, but I kind of do want to bet small here. Like overpairs and a flush draw, maybe we could call. Oh, and he does go for the, for the raise, which is nice. Given that we have the super nuts, Uh, 
and we take down a nice $265 pot. Ship it. I mean, I'm guessing that he just had, like, whatever the bomb pad was in terms of uh, set. Which I don't think he should be raising on the river. Um, gonna overcall here. Maybe a little loose. And... I'm not really gonna have many leads on this board. Um, but this hand just feels... Very marginal to check call against three. Um, and we have some very good blockers. So I will just bet fold. And I think that we... Do potentially just want to pot this turn. Obviously not having diamonds is pretty bad. And with Ace King, potentially we could just check and see a free card. There's a good chance we get jammed on with, you know, slow plate set or a big combo draw that was picked up on the turn. So I'm not sure how much I love this bet. I think we may be overplaying the blockers here, especially when we get called on the flop with the king of spades. Um, I'm going to check in a full way pot here. I think it's half pot size bet. With absolutely no backup. Um, and one over to the board. This seems very nitty. And to a half pot size bet, I don't think we can fold. And there's our overpair that isn't clean, but so is life. I mean, he should be dialing it back on this card in terms of progression. Like, not having hearts, not having a straight blocker is very unideal, given that we block top pair and the, like, top two pair type hands that he's gonna bet. Um, so it does make it more likely that he had a combo draw and turned it And <clears throat> that doesn't help. So, I mean, this is small samples. He's been giving up a lot on rivers after playing aggressively. So, don't love to see the pot size bet without a strat blocker. Um, not having hearts is obviously great, but what hand does he bet on the flop? Like, could be a hand like, you know, King 10 of hearts those kinds of hands, but we do heavily block those. Um, he's just going to have so much queen 10 and even um, 8 10, I think that we have the fold. Which is unfortunate. Um, 
two power with the low straight draw. This is probably a check back, to be honest. And I thought we were heads up, so it's definitely a check back. But when you know you're going to turn the boat, don't worry about it. This is where we get cooled by Jack 8. So, we do obviously unblock the straight. We unblock high clubs. We think that we can get value here. It's going to be tough to go for three straights. It's going to start getting pretty thin in a multi web part once we get called. Obviously, top sets and um, two pair hands like Jack 8 are going to just call on the flop. Ooh, yeah. So, call in two spots now. Question is, do we value bet? With draws missing. Flop the stray with a flush draw. And have to leave that pot. Obviously going to be taking a small stab. Um... Let's go up for some thin value. See if we get check raised and punished. Obviously calling it off here. Get the check mark on the turn. Is this guy thinking about raising jack nine? That would not be fun. And so my gut was right. I mean, we can't fold to this guy because this guy would raise. So we just definitely can't fold at this point, but it seems like we might be up against Jax, which is unfortunate. And what did he have? What did he have? King, Queen, 10-10. Ten, ten. Uh, so it was nice to turn the notes. Um, so I mean, it goes, I hate that play. Um, yeah, terrible play. I'm not sure what he's doing. Um, let's think here. Uh, so turn the nuts and unblock all the pairs. I think that we do just want to bet out here. Obviously, don't have any redraws, which isn't fantastic, but you can get some value now on the turn. Pretty bad river. Also in the sense that he is uh, less likely to call with two pair type hands. I mean, this guy's playing 92%. Uh, we lose to king 10. Do we just want to shove? I mean, he could call us with a weaker straight. Could call us with a set, too bad. Likely doesn't have a set. And he has the same hand that got there on the river. 
Okay, so we're uh, over three minutes here, uh, so we are going to be wrapping up the session. As I said before, make sure you subscribe, I'll have a bunch of content coming out, so keep up to date with that. And also, if you are interested in getting some free coaching, a free 30 minute session, head over to plopokercoaching.com and we will be more than happy to set that up with you. Thanks everyone for tuning in and good luck at the tables out there.